In lesson one, we exported the final session as an MP3 file, but we skipped some of the settings. This time we will dwell into the mysteries behind the numbers and names. But before we do anything, we need to understand how computers work. Well, a little. As it turns out, I found, computers do not work on pixie magic. Instead, they work by numbers, ones and zero, and math. Actually, coordinate systems, if you remember them from school, they are very useful for translating the analog sounds into numbers. Okay, let's imagine we have some real life sound. It might look like this. But the computer has no idea what this is, as it only works in numbers. We need to translate this curve into a series of numbers. And for this, we use the coordinate system. If we now take a sample of the sound at a specific point, we can translate that into a number. And now the computer knows what we're all on about. The computer has translated it into something that more looks like this. It's slightly more rugged than the soft curve that we came with. This will come in handy when we go behind the settings within the export menu. And in the menu, we find a list of different file formats. Instead of choosing MP3, as we did last time, we will instead look at the mother of all audio files, the WAV file. These files are the best sounding files on your computer. They are also the biggest audio files on your computer. And this is important to bear in mind, as size matters when it comes to data storage. More on that a little later. The first option we get to choose between is stereo and mono. But what's the difference? A stereo signal has both a left channel and a right channel. You could, for instance, hear a car approaching from the left and vanishing off onto the right. Mono, on the other hand, only has one channel, the center channel. And this is fine for spoken word, as the narration is always in the middle. The only reason for considering using mono is if the file size is important. Mono files are half the size of stereo files. This we can see right here. If we pop into the option menu, then we have some more options. For instance, the sample rate. The sample rate is the resolution of the file. If we go back to the coordinate system from before, then the sample rate is the amount of times a sample is taken every second. This is what a file sounds like at 8000 Hz. Teddy Sadaka has been in the clothing business since he was a teenager in the 1970s. Not the best sound, we can agree. But if we add more samples, then the sound increases in quality. And Sadaka says blood, sweat and tears have gone into it. Literally. But as we increase the number of samples, we also increase the file size. a thin white line on his right hand. That's the needle that went into my finger. When he was 15, Sadaka was sewing a button on some fabric. Moving on to loudness. Loudness is a standard for measuring audio. It simulates the way that the human ear perceives audio. This way, dynamic material, like a movie and pop music that has no dynamic range whatsoever, are perceived as equally loud. This is really a solution that is made for television, so that the commercials in the movie breaks don't blow you away and force you to dial up and down the volume of your television. But as it turned out, the entire audio industry could benefit from this solution. So all audio that is produced using loudness is perceived as equally loud. Great for our listeners. 
unfortunately, the industry never did agree on what the standard actually should be. So we have one for radio and television Europe, a different one for America, and an entirely different one again for podcast production. And even that one is still a bit in the air. But let's try to agree that minus 16 LUFS is the standard for podcast production. The broadcast format is only used by broadcast radio stations and contains some additional radio broadcast specific metadata. You can save your file in 24 bits, but what does that mean? If we go back to our coordinate system, then we see that each sample has a number. Let's assume that we only had the numbers from 1 to 9, and with them we would like to describe this point, this exact point. That would not really be possible, as it's a point between 8 and 9, maybe 8.7. So now we get to choose either 8 or 9. And this is really what bit depth is. It's the granularity of the number to describe the specific point. Fortunately, we have a rather big number to work with. A 16-bit sample can describe a number between 1 and 65,000. The point of 24-bit resolution is to make it even better. With 24-bit we can describe a number between 1 and 16 million and something. So this is a more accurate description of the analog world, and that is great, but it comes at a cost. The bigger the numbers are, the larger the files become. So if file size is no problem, then you might consider it. In reality, not many can hear the difference. As you might have noticed already, then I'm talking a lot about file size. And this is because storage and bandwidth are issues that we need to take into consideration. And this is why the industry has done all kinds of tricks to reduce the file size. This is called compression. The main point of compression is to preserve the best sounding audio and use the least amount of data. Let's return to MP3. We can always go with the simple solution and choose low, medium and high, but since we're learning something, then we better get into the options menu and have a closer look. The first option we get is channels, mono, stereo and weight joint stereo. This needs some explaining and we can do that after we've talked about bitrate. As we're now talking about compressed files, the important thing is not how we make the files, but how much space they take up on our hard drive. So the bitrate is the number of bits used per second of sampling. This is what it sounds like if we only use 32,000 bits every second. Teddy Sadaka has been in the clothing business since he was a teenager in the 1970s. And the more bits we use, the better it sounds. Literally. I have this scar on my finger right here, right? You see the scar there? He points to a thin white line on his right hand. It's a trade-off. How big the files can get and the quality of the sound. Now let's circle back to channels. We already had a look at mono and stereo when we were talking about the WAV files, but what is joint stereo? Let's say we have 128,000 bits to play with. If we use them on a mono file, then we can use all the power, so to speak, on one channel. If we choose stereo, then we suddenly have two channels, but we still only have 128 kilobits, so the quality of the single channels are divided by two. But what if we have a podcast with mainly mono sound and the odd stereo sound here and there? 
This is where the joint stereo comes in. If the signal is mainly mono, then all the resources are used on the mono signal, and the stereo signal gets less attention. It's actually rather more complicated than that, but the good thing is it works. The sample rates and the loudness normalization are the same as we saw with the wave files. And again, minus 16 LUFS, it is the most common setting for podcasts. I hope this clears up a few of the mysteries regarding audio files. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel.